Hey you guys, this is Mr. Millings and in this video we are going to learn how to perform some mass mass stoichiometry calculations involving precipitation reactions. So grab that periodic table of elements, grab your scientific calculator, grab that polyatomic ion list and grab your solubility table. Let's jump right in and take a look at an example problem. In this example problem, it says if 655 grams of aluminum sulfate reacts in solution with excess lead to nitrate, then what mass in grams of the precipitate will form? So we have a chemical reaction that's taking place in solution here, and we're asked to determine the mass in grams of the precipitate that will form. And so if we take a look at this problem right here, we can see what's going on. We can see that there are two reactants. We have aluminum sulfate reacting with lead to nitrate, and that's all that's given to us. So before we can even perform the stoichiometry here to determine the mass in grams of the precipitate that will form, what we have to do is first write a correct, uh, a correctly balanced chemical equation. So we have aluminum sulfate reacting in solution with excess lead to nitrate. So the two reactants here are going to be aluminum sulfate, and we're just going to write these right here. So we have aluminum, sorry, let me erase that. We have aluminum sulfate reacting in solution with lead to nitrate. So we have lead to nitrate as our other reactant. And so what we have to do first is we have to figure out what the two products of this chemical reaction are going to be. So let's go ahead and start writing the chemical reaction equation for this reaction here. We have aluminum sulfate. So aluminum, we know from an earlier video on ions has a positive three charge or when it uh, forms an ion it's going to form positive three ions as this aluminum loses three electrons as it bonds with other uh, substances. All right sulfate if you take a look on a polyatomic ion list is SO4 with a minus two charge. So what we're going to need to do here is we're going to need to add a subscript of 2 here and we're going to need to add a subscript of 3 to our sulfates. Keep in mind that whenever we have an ionic compound those ionic charges must add up to 0 and we get them to add up to 0 by adding these subscripts here. So there's aluminum sulfate. This is going to react with lead 2, so Pb plus 2 and nitrate if you look on a polyatomic ion list is NO3 with a negative charge or a minus one charge. And so because these two ionic charges do not add up to zero, we're gonna need two nitrates here. And so if a chemical reaction is to take place here, which in fact it does, what are the two possible products gonna be? Well, we know positive ions and negative ions attract one another. We also know that this looks like a double replacement reaction where we have a compound reacting with a compound. So the two possible products of this chemical reaction are going to be aluminum nitrate. Keep in mind aluminum is plus three. Nitrate is NO3 with a minus one charge. So we're going to end up needing three of these. And our other product is going to be lead to sulfate. So Pb with a plus two charge and sulfate, which is SO4 with a negative two charge these two ionic charges here add up to zero so we don't need to add any subscripts. So our chemical reaction equation without the ionic charges is going to look like this right here. We have Al2SO43 plus PbNO32 and this is going to end up producing AlNO33 that should be AlNO33. Let me try to erase this here. We'll rewrite this. So we have AlNO33 plus PbSO4. So here is our unbalanced chemical equation. And so before we can even start stoichiometry, we have to make sure that our chemical equation is balanced. And we can balance this chemical equation <coughs> by 
placing a three in front of our lead here. And if we do that, then we're gonna need a three in front of our uh, lead to sulfate right here. And so last but not least, we're gonna have to place a two right in front of here. So if we take a look now, our chemical equation is balanced. We have the same number of each atom on both sides of this, uh, of this arrow here. Okay, so what we can do now is we can start the stoichiometry process. In this problem right here, we have 655 grams of aluminum sulfate. That's this stuff right here. So we have 655 grams of this. And what we want to do is we want to figure out the mass in grams of the precipitate that will form. So what we have to do is we have to determine which of these two products here is a precipitate. And the way that we can do that is by looking at a solubility table kind of like the solubility table that just popped up in front of us. We can take a look at that solubility table and we can see that aluminum nitrate is aqueous. So this is going to stay dissolved in water, right? It's going to stay dissolved in the solution. However, if we take a look at lead to sulfate, we can see that this right here is not soluble in water and it's going to precipitate out of the solution. So this is the solid material that forms, and this is the solid that we're asked to figure out, or the precipitate that we're asked to find. So we want to figure out the mass in grams of this precipitate right here. So before we can even start doing the stoichiometry, we had to figure out all of this stuff right here. We had to predict the products. We had to determine which of the two products was the precipitate. We had to balance our chemical equation and we had to, in fact, write a, uh, a chemical equation using correctly written chemical formulas. So now that we've done this, we can start the stoichiometry process. So let's go ahead and do that. In this problem right here, we have 655 grams of Al2SO43 and what we're trying to do here is we're trying to figure out the mass in grams of this stuff right here, this lead to sulfate. So we're trying to figure out the mass in grams of our lead to sulfate. And so how can we do this? Well, let's think about this. If we convert the grams of this stuff here to moles, we can then use our mole ratio to figure out how many moles of this stuff are gonna form based on the number of moles of this stuff. And last, once we figure out the number of moles of this stuff, we can then convert it to grams. So the very first thing we're gonna to have to do here is we're gonna to have to convert the grams of Al2SO43 to moles. So we're gonna cancel out grams of Al2SO43. So we'll put that at the bottom here of our fraction. And we're gonna convert this to moles of Al2. SO43. In our next step, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to cancel out moles of Al2SO43 and we're going to have to figure out the number of moles of PbSO4. Moles of PbSO4. And in our last step, what we're going to do is we're going to cancel out moles of PbSO4. Let me write that more legible for you guys. We're going to convert this moles of PbSO4 to grams of PbSO4. So that's what we have to do. Now, if we take a look here, what we're going to have to now figure out are the molar masses of our reactant here and our product right here. If we take a look, we need to figure out the molar mass, right? And this step right here, what we're going to do is we're going to convert grams to moles for the known quantity. And this step right here, what we're going to do is we're going to use our mole ratio. And in this step right here, what we're going to do is we are going to convert the moles of the unknown substance back into grams. So what we have to do here is we have to determine the molar mass of this stuff here and the molar mass of this stuff here. So let's start with our aluminum sulfate. If we take a look at aluminum sulfate, aluminum sulfate has the chemical formula 
of Al2 SO43. So this substance here is made up of aluminum, it's made up of sulfur, and it's made up of oxygen. There's two aluminums, there's three sulfurs, and there's 12 oxygens. So to get the molar mass, we're going to have to take 2 times the molar mass of one aluminum, which is 26.98. We're going to have to take 3 times the molar mass of a sulfur, which is 32.07. And I'm leaving off the units here. Those units should be grams per mole, but we can attach that unit to the very end of this problem. And we're going to take 12 here times the molar mass of oxygen, which is 16.00. So let's get our calculator out. We'll take 2 times 26.98, and we'll end up with 53.5. We'll take 3 times 32.07, and we're going to end up with 96.21. And we're going to take 12 times 16.00, and we're going to end up with 192. And when we add all of this up, we are going to end up with... 342.17 so our molar mass of this stuff right here is 342.17 grams per mole so we know that every one mole of this stuff is 342.17 grams per mole now if we take a look at our mole ratio what is the ratio of the stuff that we're trying to find which is this stuff right here to the given quantity, which is this stuff right here. Well, we can take a look. We can see that the coefficient here is 3, so we'll put that right here. And we can see that the coefficient that comes in front of aluminum sulfate is a 1, so we'll put that right there. So what about this step right here? Well, we're running out of room, but we'll find a place to put this here. We need to figure out the molar mass of PbSO4. So let's go ahead and try to make some room for that right here. We have Pb. SO4, which is made up of Pb, or lead. We have sulfur, we have oxygen. There is one lead, there is one sulfur, and there are four oxygens. So we'll take 1 times the molar mass of lead, which is 207.20 grams per mole. And this becomes 207.20. We'll take 1 times the molar mass of sulfur, which is 32.07, and we'll get 32.07. And then we're going to take 4 times the molar mass of oxygen, which is 16.00, and we'll get 64.00. We're now going to add all of these up, so we'll take 207.20 plus 32.07 plus 64.00, and we're going to end up with a molar mass of 303.27 grams per mole. So our molar mass here, we just calculated, was 303.27 grams per mole. We know that every one mole of this stuff is 303.27 grams. So now all we need to do is start all the way on the left. We'll work our way from left to right. If we come across the number other than 1 in the denominator, we're going to divide. If we come across the number other than 1 in the numerator, we're going to multiply. So we're going to take 655 divided by 342.17 times 3 times 303.27. And we're going to end up with Let's try that again. 655 divided by 342.17 times 3 times 303.27. And we're going to end up with 1,740 if we're using the correct number of significant figures. So we have 1,740 grams of PBSO4 because we ended up with 
or we started with three sig figs here, our answer must be three sig figs. And if you wanted to put this in scientific notation, you could. This is going to be equal to 1.74 times 10 to the third grams of PBSO4. So either one of these answers should be acceptable. So in this problem right here, if we have 655 grams of aluminum sulfate reacting in solution with excess lead to nitrate, and the excess just means that there's an unlimited amount, an amount that's not going to run out, then what mass in grams of the precipitate will form? Well, we just figured out that this is the precipitate by looking on a solubility table, and we can see that 1,740 grams of this lead to sulfate is going to form. If you like what you see, go ahead and click that little bomb in the bottom right hand corner that will subscribe you to my channel and feel free to leave any comments or questions in the comment section down below and I really hope you guys found this helpful.